Class Radio Online. ZFM Stereo is available on TuneIn. Search for ZFM Stereo and you got it. The platform. Step up and, and speak out. You tune into ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. The name is Larry Kweirirai. On this episode of The Platform, it's a beautiful Monday, uh, the date being the 9th of April in this special show. I've seen from the reaction from the people when we, broke, when we sent out to the people on Twitter and said, we're having the show today, the excitement and the number of questions that I've got from everybody has been enthralling. But uh, uh, this is a live program. It's your program. I'll be giving you the numbers to get in touch with us. Also, uh, just to tell you that we are streaming this show on the Mighty Movies uh, uh, YouTube and Facebook pages as well as on the ZFM Stereo pages and there's video there. Now, before I uh, essentially tell you what, uh, in, in, as far, in as far as the topic today is uh, talking about, just to remind you of the frequencies, you can listen to us, Chivu 99.8, Kama TV Wange 105.1, I'm looking at Mutora Shanga 97.6, Nyanga 98.2, Mashingo 96.1, Gweru 104.3, Bulawa, you my hometown, 106.7, and uh, broadcasting from Harare, where our frequency is 106.4. Uh, listen to us over the internet. It's uh, www.zfmstereo.co.zw. Uh, also, just go to the TuneIn app. Just uh, download it, and you can listen to us live and in charge. And uh, also, you can uh, follow us on our uh, social media pages: facebookcom stereo On Twitter, it's at zfmstereo. On Instagram, it's at zfmstereozw. And our YouTube being uh, at zfm, or rather Facebook, uh, or just go to YouTube and look for zfm stereo. And you'll be able to listen to us live and in charge. Our phone lines are open. Our calling number is 0772-168045. And on our WhatsApp number being 0731-168045. Now, but now to the matter at hand. Let's look at this. Uh, last week, uh, President Emerson Nangagwa announced that the, that Geiger, the company which was uh, awarded the tender to dualize the Bridge chirundu Highway, had been uh, terminated, uh, citing its failure to avail its proof of funding. But uh, Transport Infra- Infrastructure Development Minister Jerome Gumba said otherwise. Here's part of what he said. Because uh, the president wants to see Cochrane's results, what actually happened is that cabinet resolved to put Geiger on a 60-day notice to say it was uh, disappointed by the lack of construction activity on the ground. He went on to say, cabinet say they were uh, delaying to uh, implement the construction process. I signed the letter myself. So there is no termination at the moment as we speak. They are, the, they are on the ground. Uh, car- uh, carrying out preliminary uh, work such as pegging. They have uh, the responded to our correspondence saying they are sorting issues we raised. He goes on to say our major concern as government is that they, sh- they ought to move faster or risk losing the tender. So currently the tender is still very much in, in effect. Now to discuss this and many other issues uh, this evening, I've got the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of uh, Media, Information and Broadcasting Services, uh, Mr. George, Mr. George Charamba. Welcome to the program. Good evening, listeners. I don't know whether I say listeners or viewers. Uh, I noticed you guys have gone multimedia. Yes. So, listen, uh, good evening to you all. Okay, so the question is, what is the truth in this, in as far as uh, th- this uh, tender is concerned, and where is the confusion coming from? Well, I, I'm not very sure where the confusion is coming from at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, cabinet 
on uh, its uh, sitting of uh, the, I think it was the 13th of, uh, of, of March, uh, took a decision after a long, a lengthy debate to terminate uh, that, uh, that contract. And this on the basis of uh, the duration it had taken for the contract itself to take off. And I, I dare say it uh, right up to this time, there isn't evidence at all that uh, the contract itself has taken off. By the way, in that contract, uh, the, the, there is a provision which allows for either party to terminate the contract, provided there is what is termed a material breach uh, to that contract. And uh, among the elements that are go towards defining a material breach uh, is uh, either absence of uh, progress on the ground, but more importantly, uh, inability to show financial wherewithal or financial capacity uh, to implement uh, and execute that uh, particular project. In this particular case, you notice uh, both issues uh, are at work. There hasn't been uh, the dualization of uh, the Bay Bridge uh, Chirundu Road, and uh, this need not be a subject of speculation. Anyone who applies that road will immediately see that uh, there isn't uh, evidence of works uh, that are going on in respect of that very critical uh, component of our infrastructural development program. And then secondly, um, from as far back as uh, 2016 until now, there has not been any demonstration of the ability on the part of the contracting part, uh, parties to bring the much needed uh, amount on the basis of which to start our progress and uh, to start works uh, on the ground. Yes, I mean, there, were, there was reference to uh, the old dispensation which made it very difficult uh, for, uh, for those companies to bring in money, but, that, but that's precisely the test of uh, ability to mobilize resources uh, because that contract was done not above the old dispensation or behind or below the old dispensation, but within the realities of the context of that particular dispensation, which meant uh, that clause is meant to obtain uh, in the real politic or the real environment within which the, uh, the, uh, the contract itself was, was consummated. So from the point of view of the Zimbabwean government and uh, as expressed by its own cabinet, there has been a material breach, and uh, as I said, on the sitting on the sitting of the 13th of uh, of March, if I'm not mistaken, a decision was taken to um, uh, to cancel that uh, that contract, and that the Attorney General would then advise government on how best to do it, uh, so that we don't fall foul to the terms of the agreement. As it as it emerges, the agreement itself provides for a 60-day notice uh, for uh, on the part of uh, whichever party wants to uh, break the contract. This is the 60 days that the minister uh, could be talking about. It is not a, a, a another reprieve or an extension of the period for the, for, 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 for the company to demonstrate its ability to execute the project. Rather, it is the, the notice of termination period as provided for in the contract. Uh, and uh, really, I don't actually see what the confusion is all about. So, uh, so can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Are we saying that at this point the contract has been terminated? It has been terminated uh, except uh, uh, we still have to, as it were, fulfill the 60-day requirement. And what happens within those 60 days? It means not, nothing happens except it's a, it's, it's, it's a notification period which is provided for in terms of the agreement. So soon after the lapse of those 60 days, then we open new bids. Uh, so that uh, we, 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 we carry forward the project. So are we saying in that 60 days at present that the project is hamstrung, nothing's going to happen, and we well, nothing just is, have to wait until the next nothing one Nothing has happened since 2016, which is two years. So really, if, we are, if extricating ourselves means waiting for 60 days so that we can lawfully uh, terminate the contract, I don't think uh, we, 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 it, it will be very difficult for us to do so. Remember, the essence of uh, Zimbabwe being open for business uh, rests on lawful behavior on the part of the state. And we, have, we don't have a very edifying image in the past in terms of how we have uh, gone about uh, respecting uh, contractual obligations that we have as a government. So it is important for us, no matter how, how, how long the inconvenience uh, um, um, this will take, it is important for us to live to the letter and spirit of the contract.
You tuned into ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. Get in touch with us on 0731-168045 and call us on 0772-168045. If you want to find out more on as far as that contract is concerned, the, uh, the, the, the permanent secretary is here until at uh, the top of the hour. And, and, and let's find out what really is happening in as far as this is concerned. Now, there's a lot of discomfort uh, when it was reported that the president had chartered uh, for $2.3 million in terms, in terms of a plane, plane. You have clarified this, but who could have been the source of this discomfort? Well, um, it's, it's really has, it really has to do with um, certain disgruntled elements uh, with our national airliner. You see, um, there are certain pecuniary benefits that are tend to uh, chartering uh, an Air Zimbabwe plane. Uh, benefit that flows to the staff, benefit that flows to everyone else who is involved in the movement uh, of, of, of the president around that uh, chartered plane. Uh, and uh, the disposition of those persons who tend to derive some kind of financial benefit from that travel has been to ensure that uh, whatever the inconvenience, whatever the incapacity of Air Zimbabwe, we are stuck with, uh, with, with Air Zimbabwe. But uh, in, in our case, uh, we have a different uh, template altogether. We have to look at uh, the issue of our cost, we have to look at the issue of our convenience, we have to look at the issue of safety, we have to look at uh, the capacity of the airline to be able to service other and discharge other duties, uh, whilst at the same time honouring the charter obligations that are in fact contractual. So in this particular case, we had about three courts that came from uh, different uh, uh, suppliers of, the, of, of, of air services. One court, I think, was upward of uh, two million uh, U.S. dollars, and that's the court that we had initially. Then, of course, Air Zimbabwe had a court which was just under two million, uh, but not very far from uh, the, the, the the figure quoted by the other airline. Then, um, on our way to Abidjan, we had a discussion in terms of whether government was prudently securing services, uh, in this particular case, air services. And then it's, it turns out that uh, we had a business a businessman on the plane who said, "Ah, but how can you pay all that much?" Uh, if you really try to scout around and see whether you are really getting best value for money, because I am aware of uh, a, 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 an, a, an, air, an air service that can give you a, a, a long haul plane at much less than uh, you have been quoted. And then uh, we, we challenged him. And uh, within a day, that businessman had come back to us with a firm commitment from an airline that was going to not only give us a long haul plane, which means a plane that would uh, fly non-stop to China, but do so for just 1.4 million, which meant a net saving of upward of 800,000 uh, US dollars. So really, if you look at uh, the two costs from uh, the uh, first uh, two bidders, and then of course what was now being offered to government, uh, economic prudence, you know, bids that uh, we go for the cheaper service to the extent that one, it is cheaper, two, it, co uh, it is a long haul, three, it enhances con uh, convenience on the part of traveling, of the traveling delegation. Now, uh, was the release of the plane's invoices by the Office of the President Cabinet the, fir uh, the first step in entrenching transparency? I think you will see more and more of this. I think when you govern, you must not just govern, but be seen to be governing. And one hallmark of a government that is seen to be governing is a government that uh, makes available information to the, to the citizenry. After all, a government does not create wealth. It does not create money. What it does is it, uh, it, it, it takes from uh, the taxpayer uh, monies uh, for its own daily use, which means that money is money that is held in trust and used in trust. And ultimately, the, uh, the final shareholder is the taxpayer, which is why, in fact, it is only natural and only sound that in the event of there being a misunderstanding, government must uh, be ready to come forward with, uh, with all the necessary documentation to explain its own decisions and how sound and, of course, justify uh, the soundness of those decisions to the citizenry. And then I want to then say, uh, you know, there were disturbing images. And I think as the average citizen, this is something complained about uh, in the former dispensation. Uh, you know, the kids of high profile figures who were part of the trip. And uh, now we used to complain about this. Is it going to stop? When will it stop? Well, uh, I noticed that uh, there's been quite a bit of, uh, of uh, con uh, controversy around uh, the travel of uh, um, the uh, one of uh, the sons of uh, the... Of, 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 of the president. Let me explain to you the makeup of the, of the delegation that, uh, that went to China. There was a delegation that went 
in the context of, of the joint commission. And uh, to the extent that this was a long-awaited joint commission, but one which was also critical to uh, t changing the fortunes of the country. You notice that uh, the delegation uh, covered a whole gamut of issues from infrastructure, energy, um, commercial deals, um, uh, the data servicing, financial services, you name it. And it meant that for every area of focus, it was important for us to uh, produce a complement of persons or interlocutors who would be able to speak uh, confidently and speak knowledgeably to each particular area so that the Chinese are given answers that are satisfactory. So that is a delegation that went well before uh, the president left for China. Then we had a delegation uh, of business people that went on the Saturday. The president leaves uh, on the Monday. Uh, was it Monday or Sunday? I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit mixed up. Uh, the president uh, left uh, a little later after that uh, business delegation uh, left. And uh, within that uh, delegation was young Munangagwa. He went in in his own right, on his own team, to pursue deals that uh, he is chasing with his Chinese partner, partners, which meant really his being uh, in China uh, more or less the same time that the father was there was not just fortuitous, but also a basic decision which any normal Zimbabwean businessman would take, namely to take advantage of the political interaction, which then provides an umbrella for one to interact with one's own business counterparts, because then the environment is, is a lot more hospitable for, uh, uh, for, for best results. So really, I want to see young Nangagwa as a businessman, a Zimbabwean, who is pursuing separate interests outside of government, which is why he cannot draw from uh, government coffers, and which is why his program did not even uh, coincide with the movement of, uh, of the parents. As a matter of fact, when uh, I saw something by way of a tweet from uh, young Mnangagwa, I went to the president and the first lady and said, ah, young Mnangagwa has tweeted, you know, to indicate that uh, uh, his own business contacts uh, were making fantastic progress. Except back home, this thing is playing out very badly in the sense that uh, people think that uh, it's more of the past which has now obtruded into uh, the new dispensation, uh, then the president's reaction was to say, ah, but where is he? And by then we were in Zhangjiang. We didn't have him. We had gone to Angui. Again, we didn't have him, which meant Yang Munangagwa remained in, uh, in, 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 in Beijing, which is where his uh, business counterparts was. He wasn't part of our delegation. And uh, really, coincidence and causality are very different. You tune into the FM stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. Uh, the question that I want to ask here from a listener, we're just going to open this because it was open just now. He, uh, I think it's something you respond. He says, what role does Mnangagwa's son have in government so that he can travel with his father's using taxpayers' money? There is, this is nepotism. Uh, leave th th this uh, to other citizens. Uh, Charamba is a, a fle fleeing reality. We can't fund trips and uh, benefits individuals. So the question I'll ask from there is like, you, you're saying what you're saying. I still need to understand the separation. Like, for example, they happen to, you're saying they happen to be in the, in the same country together. But that conflating of, you know, he's there as, you know, uh, that he might be taking advantage of the fact that his father is there at the same time. How does a person who's sitting at home not make the say, th that connection? The only trouble, uh, Larry, is the fact that uh, we didn't have a single businessman called Mnangagwa Jr. Collins, that's his real name. We had a whole host of business people, bankers, industrialists, uh, uh, traders, uh, infrastructure uh, business propositions that took advantage of the state visit. Uh, to come to China more or less about the same time. What I can't quite appreciate is why there's this disproportionate focus on young Munangagwa, who is just one of the many, and not on the many other business people who took advantage of exactly the same leg to situate their own contacts with their own uh, counterparts. I think essentially as Zimbabweans, we must uh, get away from uh, an easy reading of, uh, of, 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 of situations. But more importantly, we must also not try and uh, merely on the basis of parentage, deny a Zimbabwean their constitutional right to pursue their own interests 
at, at no expense at all to the taxpayer and i want to really disabuse uh, the person who has just posed the question because i thought i was uh, speaking in very plain english that uh, the young man went to china on this on his own steam not on the taxpayers money uh, but more importantly he is a zimbabwean he has a business argument he has a right just as you and me does to pursue their i mean his own interest for as long as his interests do not in any way stand in the way of government business but more importantly do not uh, those interests do not derive any financial benefits from the fact of his parentage so and this is exactly what happened so really there will always be misconceptions because uh, ultimately you are condemned or praised by whose son or whose daughter you are except we must be a little more mature than that I want to go to the issue of Air Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe Air's Airways fiasco. Yes. Uh, what is the latest on this deal? I, 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 I don't quite know why it has been called a, uh, a fiasco. Uh, what has happened is uh, the Malaysian Airlines was uh, busy rebranding and this on the, had on the heels of a very bad tragedy that happened around one of their air, 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 aeroplanes. So really, what uh, Mal Air Malaysia is doing is to discard its triple seven, its fleet of triple sevens, and uh, we saw that as an opportunity for us to, as it were, retool Air Zimbabwe. But Air Zimbabwe uh, was burdened by huge debts, historical debts, or what you call legacy, uh, legacy debts, such that I mean it could not fly to many places without having its uh, its uh, its uh, its, uh, uh, fle its fleet impounded. So there was therefore a decision. To, uh, as it will create a new enterprise with a different name so as to warehouse that legacy date and to ensure that it doesn't encumber uh, the um, relaunch of a new line under a different rubric or under a different name. This is exactly how this whole concept of uh, Zimbabwe Airways came about. It doesn't amount to any confusion. What it does is it is a, an employing of a very standard corporate practice in an environment of indebtedness. Now, what really is at issue is the fact that, one, if we finished paying for the four planes that we expect to be delivered to Zimbabwe, what are the conditions of uh, the settlement of that uh, transaction? And as uh, I speak to you just now, uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Joram uh, Gumbo, he uh, left for Malaysia. And our hope is that uh, maybe in a matter of a week or so, we'll have two of our assets from that transaction lending onto the, uh, to the Robert Mugabe International Airport, which will then begin to mark uh, the beginning of a retooling of Air Zimbabwe by whatever name to make sure that it gets back uh, to its uh, heydays so that it can really ply the skies and do so with pride as a national airline. So in simple terms, are we saying we're expecting two planes uh, next week? Yes, because for now, those, that, that's what we have paid for. Uh, what, what we need to do is uh, to always bear in mind that the delivery of, airline, of, of, of airplanes cannot outrun the payment schedule. And in any case, we owe, if, we owe Malaysia some money. We owe China some money. We owe the IMF some money. Our debt servicing record has not been that too good, such that our worthiness in terms of international writing, both bilateral and multilateral, is quite low, which is why people are insisting on cash before delivery, which is what, in fact, is slowing down the delivery of the four planes. So then, uh, will it be, uh, come under Air Zimbabwe or will it come, uh, come under Zimbabwe Airways? Well, I'm speaking from the perspective of the President's office. Really, from our perspective, this is an, a, 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 an operational issue. There is a way in which uh, the responsible minister will have to take a conscious decision, mindful of the legacy uh, uh, issues, uh, to see how best to relaunch that national airline. Under whatever name, in any case, call a rest by a different name, it will still smell the same. The issue is we must have an airline that plies the skies, that uh, contributes to this economy, and what is more, that uh, really carries our flag and uh, helps in the rebranding of the country. We want to take a quick break. Uh, just uh, get in touch with us on 0731-168-045. That's our WhatsApp number. And our calling number being 0772-168-045. It's ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. Enjoy World Class Radio Online. ZFM Stereo is available on TuneIn. Search for ZFM Stereo and you got it. 
is CFM Stereo Talk. Can we begin by looking at Zimbabwe's debt clearance plan? We have since cleared our arrears to the IMF, and right now, clearance of arrears to the African Development Bank and the World Bank is underway. It's working in progress. And I'm confident that uh, we should be able to reach an understanding uh, this year. The talk that gets you talking, Mondays to Thursdays between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Connect with ZFM Stereo via Facebook on facebook.com forward slash ZFM Stereo. The platform. Step Step up. up and speak up. You're indeed still tuned in to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. It is the platform. My name is Larry Kwiderai. And in the studio, we've got uh, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Media, Information and Broadcasting Services, Mr. George Charamba. We've been talking about a lot of issues that have been touching the nation as far as uh, we've just finished talking about the Air Zimbabwe issue. We talked about uh, the planes that had been uh, used or the chartered plane that had been used by the President. The President's son being in China. What are your thoughts in as far as what you've heard? Heard from the permanent secretary, and as far as this con- is this is concerned, on 0731-168045 being our WhatsApp number and our uh, calling number being 0772-168045. Just to remind you that this show is being live streamed with video on uh, on the uh, Mo- Mighty Movies uh, YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as on the ZFM, ZFM Stereo Facebook page. So go and watch us live in there, and we catch the reactions as they happen. Uh, other than that, uh, follow us on Twitter at ZFM Stereo on Facebook is facebook.com forward slash ZFM Stereo. Now, it, back to you, uh, Mr. Sharamba. In your column in a weekly newspaper yesterday, you said, I'm very uh, clear about one thing a current ministries, both in structure and temperament, cannot be the panacea to this old challenge. We need a new institutional framework, arguably one akin to, to what we saw in Rwanda. Zimbabwe is uh, disabled by negative risk profile. This uh, stems from the uh, past policy vault fasts on uh, shifts and uh, from our poor debt servicing record, which you made reference to earlier. They're, they're, uh, they're one a supremely executive and overriding institutions deals with these investors, deals with them for, from start to finish, all in uh, 24 hours. This corporatized ex- executive authority led by a, a CEO who is at par with cabinet ministers and who reports directly to cabinet passes for one stop shop, uh, which uh, decides on every, uh, everything an in- investor requires to speedily set up shop. Q to understand the broad strategy on many initiatives is, uh, is appreciating that President Nangagwa is reframing national question beyond the national question beyond the rhetoric of uh, liberation struggle and land reforms. Until now, our reforms were hermetically sealed, uh, a subject of a, of a idle, rambustious, a boast e- <laughs> ever. This is your words. Who wrote that? <laughs> Ever guarded by a highly efficient <laughs> army of uh, ragged, trousered <laughs> nationalists. Do you, ever re- do you ever think about this when you're writing it? <laughs> to finish off, who had no uh, compunction in letting Zimbabweans starve while feeding, quote unquote, them with a twin alibi and sweet lie of indigenization and empowerment. For that reason, the old dispensation gave Zimbabweans a lot of food for thought, but hardly any for the stomach to use the late Achebe's uh, acerbic phrase. It is the bureaucratic temperament which has not only put off investors, but he uh, but has bred a corrupt anti-business outlook, uh, which we have paid dearly. Right. Sure. Does this suggest that after elections, we'd like to, to see a trimmed uh, for, uh, cabinet or system? I don't know whether the input, just put in perspective, uh, the, that long uh, uh, chunk that you have quoted. Really, I was dealing with uh, the institutional readiness of uh, Zimbabwe to meet the heightened interest we are beginning to see from the investor community as they come into the country. And I'm basically arguing that uh, there is a way in which uh, the old structures that have saved us uh, in the past may not be well attuned to discharge that responsibility of uh, giving quick, ready answers to an investor who is in a hurry to set up shop. And that, uh, for that reason, there is need for us to reinvent our institutions in order to make them a little more amenable to the interests of uh, the investor. Whether that translates to fewer ministries, 
or that uh, translates to more institutions but well geared to deal with, uh, with uh, the investor? That I cannot answer because that's really the prerogative of uh, the president. The little issue I always have uh, with this uh, level of discourse is that for Zimbabweans, everything boils down to dollars and cents, boils down to numerals. How many ministries do we have? How many ministers do we have? Except, and little, I, I plead to, uh, to dear Zimbabwe, there is a saying which says, if you want an omelet, you have to be ready to break the egg. Right? Reorientating a whole bureaucracy in such a way that we move away from a politically overdeveloped state to a state which is entrepreneurial, which is exactly what we require now, will cost money, will cost lives in the sense that, I mean, we'll have lots of persons who will have to be laid off and new skills which have to be brought on, uh, on, on board. But more importantly, it will actually make a case for the creation of new institutions which are geared to dealing with an entrepreneurial state, which is what we saw in Rwanda. So really, I don't want to reduce things to the number of ministries or number of ministers. I want to reduce the whole matter to appropriate institutions that answer to the call of investors so this country can move forward. So then, uh, given that sort of uh, background, Ms. Claire Akamanzi, the Chief Executive Officer of the Rwanda Development Board, will be in the country from the 10th of this month. And on, this? and on the invitation of uh, the President. Uh -huh. What is the significance of this? I visit? think fundamentally it's clear to us that we are one condemning our past pra practices, which as I said are linked to an overdeveloped political state. What we are trying to do is to reinvent a new state on the on the back of uh, or on the ruins of a of a political state a new state that uh, puts accent on uh, on business on the marketplace on fdi on uh, on economics 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 to paraphrase the president's own phrases right uh, and what it means is we are we have gone shopping and we are looking for the best practices on the continent and beyond basically to see how best we can rejig the wall uh, of our machinery to make it answer to the uh, to this new requirement. But I mean, with all due respect, mm -hmm. right? The the a number of deals were signed this uh, past week uh, by the, during the president's visit to in in, in a Pfizer state visit, sure. and the former president signed a number of deals. But to date, nothing has materialized. Frustration is cre you, you can understand it's creeping in uh, into the uh, into the citizenry. What differentiates what the uh, president Nangagwa's trip and that which was made by the former president? Which is precisely why I'm here with you. I fully understand and I fully pre appreciate the frustrations of Zimbabweans. We have uh, had so many so-called mega deals, and it's a phrase I never use, that were signed in the past, which, uh, as I said, gave us lots of food for thought, but hardly any for the stomach. So necessarily under those circumstances, it is only natural and fair that Zimbabweans uh, develop a skeptical outlook in terms of these initiatives. Except uh, uh, there are three key issues that uh, make uh, that uh, um, define this new era that we are in uh, and which therefore uh, lays a basis for a different expectation but which also exhorts us to move away from cynicism and see and look at ourselves anew. Firstly, uh, you, know, you notice that uh, the, the, we, we have moved away from a bureaucracy, business as usual, tempo of doing government business to a hundred day cycle, incremental hundred day cycle, uh, results oriented, high accountability, philosophy of managing public affairs, which means at the expiry of every hundred days, every ministry is expected one to explain how much it has achieved in respect of its set goals, why it has not achieved if there are instances of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of falling short of those expectations, what it intends to do by way of making up for those, uh, for those shortfalls. But more importantly, to set new, new targets so that incrementally we break the inertia that uh, has in fact been standing in the way of transforming those deals into investment uh, projects on the ground. So really, the war re-engineering of the bureaucracy is one f key feature which really shows that uh, we are moving away from, an, uh, I called it an arthritic past, 
to a past or to a present which is a lot more nimble, which is in fact goal oriented. The second aspect has to do with uh, what I called the re-engineering of the state away from politics to Zimbabwe is open for business mantra as it has been articulated by the president. You see, that is much more than just a mantra. It's a worldview where we are saying ultimately the behavior and conduct of the state is judged by how well it uh, responds to the FDI requirements as well as the requirements of business uh, as it moves forward. Then uh, the third aspect, which is really critical, is that uh, the previous mega deals emphasized government-to-government -government interaction. What I find very fascinating about this uh, latest uh, um, uh, um, uh, engagement by the Chinese is that there is more accent on company-led or private sector-led agreements so that uh, the data burden that we have can now be got the better of by redirecting capital via private uh, enterprise, which means essentially we are lowering the risk, but we are also putting forward our private sector as the best leg on the basis of which to beat the limitations that we have arising from the indebtedness that uh, is ours as, as, as a country. So really there is that element. Then of course uh, you have noticed that even without the president going to China, we have been having delegations after delegations that are responding to the new policy environment, which might be your fourth factor. The new policy environment which uh, has uh, been developed uh, after the November developments. And that policy environment uh, is, uh, is, is marked by a pro-business policy situation, is marked by uh, a government that doesn't uh, uh, flip-flop in terms of its own policies, is uh, marked by a government that responds positively to the requirements of, uh, of investors. So really, it doesn't take uh, a war president to go to China to indicate or to signal a new dispensation. What does is the fact of people responding to the new policy environment coupled with the uh, adjustment of uh, the Indigenization Act, which you know has been such a negative force, a negative legal element to our matrix, uh, police matrix in the country. So really, the, the present is another country. The past is, in fact, a dead one. Oh seven three one one six eight zero four five. Get in touch with us on uh, WhatsApp on oh seven seven two one six eight zero four five. That's a call. Now you segued nicely. You mentioned the private to private uh, participation that's taking place, and as far as that is concerned, now President MSM Nangagwa uh, last month released the list of uh, forex uh, external externalizers. Now the Chinese who top the list have disputed it, with one official saying, "This list is not credible. There are many loopholes." Was this issue raised uh, during the president's interface with the Chinese during the, their meetings? Don't worry about that. In Zimbabwe, please don't worry about it. I'll tell you what. If I am uh, serving in a Zimbabwean embassy, say in any country in the world, I have an obligation as a representative of government to provide what are called consular services to our citizen, right? Regardless of uh, status, right? Regardless of... Uh, moral rectitude, right? Every government will always come to the defense and rescue of its own citizen, because that is, uh, that is expected of it. But uh, away from the Madden crowd and in the, in the neither regions of, uh, of, uh, of government, we parley and speak heart to heart. And then we remind each other that the very laws that are, have in fact are convicted, if conviction it is, uh, your citizens here do exist in your own jurisdiction, which means there is nothing that we are doing which is untoward or which doesn't resonate with the legal system that is there in uh, the People's Republic of China or elsewhere in the world. You see, so really, the, the, the Chinese government is not surprised. In fact, uh, we, that was not an issue at all when, 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 we, when we, we visited China. But more importantly, investors do consider in the whole matrix, matrix of, uh, their, of their, of their cow class, investment cow class if you want, the fact of adherence to law, the fact of enforcement regime in terms of the laws that govern the market. If you are in an, in an, in an environment where laws are floated left, right and center, no investor, no citizen feels safe. So really, what you demonstrated through that list was an indication that high or low, wide or, or, or thin, 
big or small if at all you play uh, games with our law we will not hesitate, hesitate to take you on and a signal has been sent firstly to make sure that uh, the errant companies do make restitution to this economy which is terribly abused and then secondly to tell everyone in the marketplace that the past is another country we have drawn a line and that from now onwards we better behave and trade in a lawful, in a lawful way so again the question was this issue raised or not i get it wasn't, I, I get, it wasn't, it wasn't raised so there was no discussion that took place absolutely none okay absolutely none uh, now, our current uh, president has pledged zero uh, tolerance towards uh, corruption. Yes. Right. A number of high-profile arrests have already been made, but some argue that it's all political persecution in the sense that only those who belong to a certain faction which opposed him are being targeted. When will we have some figures in the current uh, the uh, cabinet, for example, have been accused of being arrested. Which is to say, when will we have uh, current figures in the current uh, government guilty? You see, that's the import of your statement. Essentially, you're asking me to predict when, okay, so gonna when Charamba is I'm going gonna to... I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, <laughs> very simple. Yes. We didn't talk about guilt. Yeah. There have been people who have been arrested and they have charges before. Yes. Right? So, this is not about guilt. This is about for just arresting. Doesn't, doesn't this give you lots of comfort that uh, following the arrest, those persons are delivered to courts of law? Um, that's not the question we're dealing with yet. Yes, what is uh, the It's question? a very specific question. Yes. Others have been arrested because there, there's the argument that there are only certain people who get arrested and they happen to belong well, to Well, arrests have to be done on certain people. The question is, have we seen enough of the arrests? And I would, I would dare say no. For the simple reason that for as long as there are human beings who are operating in an environment and who are given to breaking the law, then necessarily more arrests will be made in future. Okay. Yes. I'm going to come back to this quickly. Yes. yes. Uh, because I want to move on and want to start getting calls in and, be, and deal more with the WhatsApp messages. Sure. The fact that there's only been people from a certain side who've been arrested and the other side has got no one being arrested. The, Which for, other for, side? For, for, no, the, I'm getting the, lost the, a bit. The perception of factions, yes. people who are against them. The question I'm asking is, for the average person, again, let's speak to the average person. Let's speak to the one person sitting at home in yes. Peru right now. Yes. The perception is, this is political persecution. Well, except the persons who have cases to answer were persons who were in the government that uh, made way to the new dispensation, isn't it? It's not being suggested that I should go to Buhera and arrest someone merely to balance it off. No, necessarily. If the question is about the integrity in the use of public resources, then necessarily those that were in government will have a case to answer. And uh, really the questions in terms of which persons answer is not a closed chapter. It is ongoing. There are investigations and I happen to know that quite a number of investigations are underway investigations involving persons who are even in government as we speak and when uh, the investigations are done and complete definitely those persons will be arraigned uh, before the courts the fact that uh, you have one or two characters who were arrested uh, first might probably just indicate the pace of investigation and the enormity of the alleged crimes which uh, they are facing but that doesn't mean closure to uh, the crackdown on, uh, on, on, on corruption for as long as they are human beings and human beings being, being creatures of frailty, it means you always have laws, and it means you always have arrests, and it means you always have people appearing before the courts. So rather than prejudge a process, why not take comfort from the fact that the era of impunity is gone, and uh, how that uh, era goes is really a function of time and fullness. You're listening to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. We're going to take another break. We're going to come back. I want to explore a lot more in, in as far as a training topic at the moment being the relationship with the president and his predecessor. ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. Connect with ZFM Stereo via Facebook on facebook.com forward slash ZFM Stereo. It's ZFM Stereo Talk. We are always moaning about the state of our roads. Uh, Your Worship Bernard Manyanyi, thank you, sir, for coming through to the program. Are you receiving money from Zinara? And if you are, what are you using it for? She said, I'm so sorry. 
the crisis we are facing yeah. in the last two three years around port holes firstly it's not a, a problem of one city mm -hmm. and secondly it's not a problem of last year or the year before mm. it tells the story of the eight or so years that funds have gone to zinara and they don't come back to the roads Mm -hmm. That's where that's where we are. Where we are. The talk that gets you talking Mondays to Thursdays between six p.m. and nine p.m. To all you Twitter heads, connect with ZFM Stereo on twitter.com forward slash ZFM Stereo forward slash ZFM Stereo. The platform. Step, step, step up. up and speak up. You're still tuned into ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town is the platform. The name is Lada Kwiderai, and we are broadcasting this on our uh, on Mighty Movies uh, YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as the ZFM Stereo page. So go there and tune in, and you can watch the pictures and listen to the conversation as it happens. As, and uh, we've got in the studio uh, the, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of uh, Broadca Information Broadcasting and Media uh, Services, uh, inter information, information Media and Broadcasting. Service and get excited because I've got a very good question here that just came in that I need to ask you, uh, Mr. George Haramba. Now, on Twitter earlier, we sent out a whole bunch of questions, and uh, one that kept coming up is uh, Can you? This is in Klantla who asked the question Can you ask him about the 228,000 for the Premier Services Medical Aid? Can, please ask him why is that he's still in government after having been involved in such a huge scandal? What I was scandalous about it? That's a big question. I was a board member. And uh, I got paid for uh, the services that I provided to uh, Peace Mass. I have absolutely a very clear conscience in respect of that money. Uh, what was it? Issue was the fact that uh, did we have to have so many board meetings, which then uh, translated into the uh, board fees that we all got. But you see, uh, we were running a behemoth. And uh, if you look at uh, the portfolio of Peace Mass at the time, it will be a story that will reveal to you the fact that uh, that became, in fact, the biggest health funder in the country, ahead of everyone else. And this was because of the intensity of the oversight role that we played uh, at, the t at the time. And besides, I was representing our government interests on PISMAS and got my due on the basis of uh, the board meetings that I attended to. So really, I have, my conscience is very, very clear. And I would save a little more years, including a century, if God were to allow me work in government for that long because my record is clean and my integrity can be vouched by all the papers. If um, anyone is interested, they can go to PISMAS and uh, go through all the paperwork uh, that is there and they should be able to be satisfied that in fact I didn't get a dime more than I deserved as a board member. Get in touch with us on 0731-168-045 and 0772-168-045 being our call number. The previous number was our WhatsApp number. As soon as I get a flashing light on the phone calls, I will uh, get uh, the permanent secretary to respond to you in as far as that is concerned. Now, uh, let's move on to the, the new president's relationship with his uh, predecessor. Are they on talking terms? They are on talking terms uh, telephonically. And occasionally uh, they uh, raise each other. Uh, what, uh, what has not happened is uh, a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, so yes, uh, in fact, uh, when, he, when we left for Botswana uh, as part of the state visit, President Munanga phoned his uh, predecessor to say, well, uh, Chef, of course, he was saying that with a tongue in cheek, because you know the chemistry between President, then President Mugabe and, uh, and, Omas, and, and uh, Sanitza Kama was not a very happy one. So then the president said, well, good luck and uh, yeah, yeah, my regards to him and we hope you make progress. Right? Again, um, when uh, the president uh, uh, left for Abidjan, they, they had again another telephonic conversation because there's still an outstanding meeting that is to take place between uh, the two of them. Uh, but more importantly, the, uh, the former president's uh, medical check uh, schedule was also due. And uh, for that to happen, uh, and in terms of the structural obligations of the state, uh, all the arrangements have to be done by government. Again, there was contact uh, between, uh, between the two. So there's been lots of uh, communication between the two. Yeah, we're quoted as saying in the um, Voice of America, for example, as saying that they keep they seem to be all sorts of things that uh, keep come in the way of this meeting that, that is supposed to take place. Is it going to take place? When is the likely meeting likely to oh, take place? Oh, let me, let, me, let me allay your fears. 
Uh, and I want to put it in Shona. My comrades, my Viraya, Vaka Bakuri. Vaka Joina politics, more or less about the same time. Vaka Garam Jere, they say more or less the same time. Right? Vaka Buddha Majere, Vaka Indakushimurenga, Vaka De Zana, Vam Nanga Gubapes at Grira Velo, Vari Zambia, Vaka Wea Vaka a special assistant to president. Like poor my responsibilities, which are quite sensitive for a for liberation movement. After independence, we like had our first ever uh, Minister of State Security, and you know that is a very sensitive portfolio. Like a Bapo, we can take defense. Like a Bapo, we can take finance. Like a Bapo, we can take speaker. Like a Bapo, we can take housing. I'm not giving you in the in the order of of of, 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 of chronology, mm. but just to show you how, in fact, uh, for a very long time. There is a way in which exposure of Nangagwa was in a way that was preparing him, one way or the other, for a larger assignments to come, which, which in fact have uh, since uh, transpired. So, Vane Ukama Wakadzama, Wakadzama, which is precisely why that war conflict Yakaitika ahead of November, Yanga Chita Geta Wam Nangagwa, precisely because there was an awareness, Yekuti, Ukama Wawiru, Wanga we so close, and that therefore, uh, on the basis of seniority and on the basis of exposure, the only natural successor to the president then would have been Ram Nangagwa. But of course, there were some other interests that were trying to stand in the way of that natural succession, which is what then created a situation of conflict. So really, uh, just uh, interestingly, uh, the president was telling me of an, ane of an, ane of an, ane ane an anecdote. Uh, the president wanted, uh, the former president wanted my arrangements made for him. And then he was in Singapore for, uh, for, for his medical checkup. Then uh, the Babam Kunur and Dovaka Tumwan message, Yekuna president, because President Wanga were away. She can say, Ah, Taurai chef. And the president, funny enough, Vam Nangagwa, never uh, addresses Vam Gabe as former president. He says, Chef. Which means there's still that uh, relationship of affinity that has always existed. She can say, Motor or a chef kuti. Ah, Druke and Okucha in Amswatu. I've so gone out to test a thing at the same country, same time. Because then that creates uh, a bit of invidiousness on the part of our, of, our, of, our, of our hosts. So as soon as I come back from China, then uh, you should be free to go. Uh, to uh, to uh, to your program, your yeah, 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 medical checkup. Where upon one guy be reacted by saying, "Dear Emerson, one day no zero." You see. So really, what I've discovered is that um, for as long as these two are interacting directly, away from the meeting political crowd, there is that kept good chemistry. There is that understanding, and I bet my bottom dollar. If they weren't these medals, some forces that are still abusing the former president, that meeting we are talking about would have long taken place. And I happen to know for a fact that uh, President Nangagwa is more than ready to meet with his predecessor so that uh, whatever issues are pending can be discussed. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, that meeting will take place eventually. So I've got a question here. So it says it makes reference to uh, this party called NPF and Zanu PF. It says are they saying why consult Ngabe on government issues? Kanamuna Abu Dangai and so why is that consultation still happening? I don't think uh, the intention is to consult on government issues, uh, or even if it was, what you need to bear in mind is uh, governments do have traditions. Government uh, do work on advice. Um, whatever happened in the past, it doesn't take away the fact that uh, the former president uh, carries a welter of experience as an elder statesman who is of note not just on the African continent but globally. There are certain nibbling, nibbling issues that will always arise in the context of governing a country which will require the voice of uh, wisdom, the voice of the past. And Vam Gabe is a symbol of that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that voice. So really, I don't think it's a matter of uh, attitudes. Uh, it is a fact of recognizing an elder statesman who is still uh, with us, uh, more or less the same way that can Kune Vadara, 
vanasekuru vamunogara muchikonsult and never mind their age because hakuna musha usina vasharukwa and that is basically the spirit it's not it's not like uh, he's going to dictate terms in terms of how government is going to be run no not really Oh seven three one one six eight zero four five. There's a number you can call us on. Now, uh, moving on that, in the non-presidential move, Parliament has summoned the former president. Uh, is this uh, what's your opinion? Is this a form of uh, persecution? Except I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on the part of the executive. Mm. Uh, Parliament is uh, that right to call whomsoever to uh, to explain. I don't know whether that uh, that invitation uh, obtains legally. Because I happen to know that uh, there is a certain level of immunity which comes with uh, the fact of being a president. Uh, maybe I need to uh, look again at the law and see whether it is possible for us and for parliament to uh, really make that kind of a call uh, on, on, on the president. But uh, really that's, that's the prerogative of, 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 of parliament and I leave it to parliament. Now it is reported that Gold Pan has allegedly moved into the former First Lady Grace Mugabe's farm in Mazoe. Now is she not entitled to such security on her properties? Well, um, I think uh, let's, 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 let's raise two simple points. Gold panning is happening nationwide. If you are unfortunate enough to have a farm which uh, has gold deposits, rest assured you gave a visit from Panas, right? It's happening across provinces. It's happening on all different farms, such that there is nothing untoward or, or unique about uh, Panas uh, chasing the mirage of gold. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that chase takes them to Farmura, uh, former first lady. And it, uh, my, my deputy, Vachikore, is battling exactly the same problem except uh, it doesn't hit my headlines uh, but I'm, all I'm saying is Tashika a stage where we've made gold panning and gold sales such a rewarding uh, proposition and more importantly in an environment of high unemployment that has become some kind of safety net for uh, the young generation in which case wherever you then immediately have a stampede of people who are actually go to exploit that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, that that uh, uh, subsoil asset so really let's let's uh, situate that development within a broader national context then the second aspect is look taka publisha gazeti rema services uh, to which uh, the former president and his household are entitled and it Pa gazeti ro ro ataka publisha ro ro and is there and is available to every Zimbabwean. There is no mention here kuti that service or security avo extends kunema private investments avo. Ndo da kuti pans we seek a papa. A pana pa rinonzi the government of Zimbabwe will provide security kunema private investments of the former first family. It could be Kushungo Dairies, it could be your farm, it could be any other business that you might have. Uh, it could be the, uh, the, the children's orphanage. State are in our obligation to provide a security in respect of a gainful enterprise. Because then we are suggesting that the government joins you in picking the cost of running your business but gets excluded in enjoying the profits that are there there from. So really, it is actually the responsibility of the Mgabes, the same way that is the responsibility of the Charambas, to provide security to Nema Investments, but to then suggest that whenever there are lapses, the security, because of certain things that you have not done on your enterprise, then you call upon the government of Zimbabwe to be held accountable for it is to suggest that the citizens' mass as taxes must be used to defend and protect private enterprise. And it's not fair. Now, I want to ask you, now, we got elections coming up. Yes. Big issues, media reforms. Yes. Now, if you have sincerity about transparency and so forth, why do we still have IPA? Why don't we have IPA? Why do we have it? I, what, I, what, what is it about IPA that is objectionable? This is exactly my, my, my biggest problem. Just now, I've had a submission from... Uh, from uh, the Media Institute of Southern Africa, right? And uh, they raised that uh, paper 
on the basis of two purported considerations. One to say that IPA was out of sync with the, with the new constitution, right? And then the second aspect was to say that IPA was tending in the way of a level playing field in terms of uh, the impending 2018 general ele harmonized elections. That, but going through, and I went through meticulously uh, the submission from uh, MISA, I was hard put to find any particular element that related to the constitution of Zimbabwe. If anything, they were raising issues to do with child protection, simply because they thought that our child protection clauses would be contained in AIPA. Yet, in fact, we have a whole act that protects children. They also were raising issues about the right to be forgotten, which is not a constitutional issue, but is an emerging issue from the social media, which our main jurisdictions are still grappling with and for over which there is no closure. And really, when you went through that whole document, it is a long document, I had difficulties in, in, in putting my finger on any issue that I would trace back to the constitution of Zimbabwe. And in any event, let's not forget that any statutory uh, provision which is out of sync with the national constitution necessarily becomes uh, ultra virus, that particular constitution, in which case it cannot obtain uh, in, in, in a court of law. Then secondly, in respect of uh, the elections, again, the same uh, problem arose. I could not find anything that they raised which suggested or impacted on the uh, impending uh, harmonized elections, such that what they were proposing in that submission was more an updating of AIPA to make it come to terms with the ever-changing uh, media environment. And on that one, we are, we are together with them. As a matter of fact, this particular week, uh, barring other, other unforeseen, I actually intend to invite Mr. to our office so that we can read together the two submissions they've given in respect of uh, IPA as well as, B, as, as well as BSA, so that I get to know whether I've misread that document, and if so, whether there are any issues that I need to raise. But you are also aware that uh, there is a whole uh, bunch of, uh, provi of, of, of draft uh, uh, provisions that are now before Parliament, which will be considered, uh, uh, considered ahead of elections. right? But I want to, uh, I hope you can allow me a bit of space. By the way, as we move towards our elections, as we move towards elections, all media institutions, private or public, are placed under the authority of Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. It means George Jaramba loses control of ZBC, both radio and television. ZFM, which is where I am just now, Star FM, which is uh, a Zim Papers proposition or any other electronic medium because they have to account for their editorial behavior to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. The same also applies to the newspapers. And the law is very clear. If you allow an uh, editorial matter which is political for one FN, one pa party, you must then even it out by, making exactly, uh, by offering exactly the same opportunity to all political parties. So really, the behavior of uh, the media for the duration of elections is going to come under the auspices of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, which is why we surrender both the Zimbabwe Media Commission as well as the Broadcasting Authority of Zimbabwe to play, to subserve uh, say their own services to ZEC and not uh, to, 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 to the ministry. To at, at what point does this happen? Once uh, there is a proclamation by the president. Okay, I've got a message here from Clive from Blau. He says uh, he was spokesperson of our previous president and now he's still spokes spokesman of our current president. How can you put the then and the now? Except uh, how do you put uh, the current president who is in the then and also in the now? But this question is directed at you. Yes, it is directed at me. So, except, so, I mean, I, except I'm saying the point I'm trying to suggest is that uh, systems do not rupture. They evolve. The same George who was with uh, with uh, President Mugabe can, on the basis of sheer competence, transit into a new dispensation. And as a, as a matter of fact, we had a conversation with the current president who said, well, I still want your services as my spokesperson. And then I said, uh, really? Surely shouldn't you get your own, uh, your own person? Then said, well, you are the person I've chosen. So really, there's no difficulties with that. 
and uh, he's my he's my boss i have the public service had no difficulties with that and the public service is my employer so having satisfied both my boss as well as the employer i have really no compunction in terms of transiting from one dispensation to the other after all i was part of the forces that really gave rise to the current dispensation got a message here that says when is the proclamation of the elections happening uh i think the law is very clear uh what what uh, the law says is that um um 30 days 30 days before the expiry of uh the the term of uh that we, we, which is obtaining just now uh the president should be able to do the proclamation it's a law that we weren't even alive to in fact we thought we were going to have elections much earlier until we realized that we are in terms of the new constitution we can't have elections before july so the proclamation will come just about that uh, that month of uh, of, uh, of of july or slightly before but in anticipating that uh, provision in the constitution so now getting back to to this issue because uh the, the issue of the forces that you say that 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 proclaim themselves before the the current dispensation how were you part of of it all well you know you know um i i was i was uh part of the negotiating team that provided uh, some link between uh the military and uh, the former president alongside uh uh, Father Mkonori and uh, a colleague called Arod Nepera, right? So, so, so really, we were uh, given this very rather unenvious role of plying between uh, the, the the military and, of course, uh, the outgoing president to just make sure that there was some understanding, to just make sure that the transition itself was uh, was was peaceful. And I am so happy that. Uh, we were able to discharge that function without a loss of life, uh, but also smoothly. But in a way that uh, really made for a very smooth transition, which has been a miracle worldwide. Professor Jonathan Moyo said you were the, uh, quote, unquote, junta secretary. So whose side were you on in all of this? <laughs> whose side? Uh, I was on the side of Zimbabwe. And my the, country okay, the, you, were, you were famously said that it was famously said and quoted uh, all over that you said if the former president were to leave office, you yes. would also leave office. Yes. So the question then becomes: Yes. Why did you maintain? And secondly, given that same question, which side were you on as far as creating this uh, environment? Well, that was actually my expectation. I expected uh, to do two things. Uh, leave government about the time that the president would have left and this was all on the assumption that you know that departure would be normal right uh, except then it happened in a very acrimonious and, uh, and uh, conflictual environment and then uh, the second thing I was going to do was I was going to join the former president in working on his memoirs because he needs to download he owes this country some kind of history and I thought I had some role to play but uh, I also you know I, I lost my wife I wanted to give a little more time to my children so that, you know, I could have more time with the kids uh, and, uh, you know, really uh, play surrogate mother in the absence of my late wife. So really, these were the three considerations that I had until uh, when the president, after, you know, constituting his government, then said to me, well, Charamba, this is national service. It's not about what you want. It is where I would want you to do uh, what I would want you to do. So you are joining me in the capacity of permanent secretary and as well as uh, as a spokesperson, and you notice for a, for a long period, the Minister of Information didn't have a minister, uh, and uh, that meant uh, really I, I, it was a very delicate operation. And he didn't have a minister, of, uh, a minister not because there are no Zimbabweans who could have played that role, but simply because there is a limit to the number of appointments which the president could do outside uh, outside the uh, parliament, and that sort of uh, got him hamstrung. And in any event, he then took a position to say, "Well, I'm only finishing." the tail end of uh, my predecessor's term. I might as well go for elections, win those elections, and then uh, start afresh my, uh, my new mandate with a new term. But uh, he felt he needed my services. And uh, for as long as uh, he requires that uh, service from me, and for as long as I'm able to provide that service, I will, I'll, I'll be ready to, uh, to, to, to offer it. Until such time that uh, he hopefully releases me, and when he does, I'll tell you I'll not be a day longer. So now, you speak glowingly of your relationship with the former president. Yes. 
But there's a famous incident in Chinoy mm. with, the, with the First Lady. Yes. How is your relationship with her now? Oh, by the way, I, I thought I dealt with that in another interview uh, with, with ZFM. Uh, we made up, uh, I was going to say we kissed, except, uh, you know, it doesn't quite, uh, it's not an appropriate metaphor to deploy at this juncture. Um, it's, it's something that happened in the past and uh, the past is gone and uh, behind us. We look to the future and uh, look at uh, as it were interacting uh, uh, with a new spirit and with new amity. Okay, uh, you're listening to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hardest radio in town. Get in touch with us, with us on 0731-168045 and also uh, on 0772-168045 for calls. Uh, the, the media review says, when will we, will we have new broadcasters being licensed? Does it recognize the vast job opportunities that could be opened up with new TV and radio stations? I, 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 I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that same questioner uh, is at the same wavelength with the entrepreneurs mm. because once we fix the issue to do with uh, decoders right and uh, just now the tender is, uh, is, is just about to be floated uh, it will mean that overnight we will have licenses to give out to 12 television license operators right I don't know and I hope Zimbabweans are ready for that because it will come pretty soon, right? But I've also been informed by our engineers that there's a new technology which would actually double that capacity. We have decided we are not going to go SD. If we're going to go, to go SD, we'd have had 24 uh, channels in an instant. But now I hear we, we are going HD, which is high definition, because that's where the quality is. Now I'm told there's a new technology which can actually double that capacity, which means we might end up having 24 licenses to give out right now if you look at the experience we've had in respect of the newspapers there are quite a number of titles that were licensed by the zimbabwe media commission which are still to take off right there are also some instances where we have licensed some content distributors who were so long in operationalizing their licenses what it tells you is that uh, increasingly we are getting to a situation where that small cake which is the Zimbabwean economy, is getting congested in terms of who is getting a piece out of it. But my hope is that as the economy grows, then we should be able to, as it will, accommodate more and more channels. But I, I, I promise uh, to the questioner that we are almost on the verge of a multi-channel era from a televisual point of view. And I hope the entrepreneurs who are eager and waiting for that licensing process are ready. Tafazu from Milton Park say the former president sev- uh, said several people d- uh, died during the uh, intervention of, uh, uh, of November. Was he telling a lie? I, uh, I am not used to, t- to, t- to using the word lie to describe my seniors. But uh, I can assure you there are no several people who die in a country and they are not known. Okay. We had, by the way, I need to explain this. We had one uh, officer from the Central Intelligence Organization who was arrested alongside a few others for standing in the way of an operation. That particular officer apparently was a diabetic. And because of the shock of that arrest, right, he, we lost him. It was a very sad incident uh, that happened. And it's the only incident to my mind uh, which uh, really uh, could uh, pass for a death which is indirectly linked to the operations that happened. But if you consider that um, uh, guns were moving, tanks were moving and were going through a very delicate phase, elsewhere would have had bodies and bodies uh, on the streets. In our case, this didn't happen. And I'll tell you one thing in confidence, uh, which is rather ironical because I'm on radio. What made, you see, the Zimbabwean transition is non-repeatable. That's why it passes for a miracle. What makes it non-repeatable is the fact that our command, the command of our defense or our security establishment is amazingly literate. You could sit down with the commanders, reason it out with them, in spite of all the operations and the tensions that come with that operation to say, 
ah, General Chuenga, look, this one is not on. Why don't we look at it differently and do it A, B, C, D? And they would see your point. Because, I mean, these, quite a good number of them are PhDs. Just to have that intellectual faculty does make a difference between creatures of the brawn and creatures of the brain. So really, you don't find that level of literacy in any other command on the continent, which is why I dare say what happened in the month of November, uh, which has passed for a miracle, cannot be tried elsewhere. I want to put you back. Uh, you said in a statement just now that there were no, there were no uh, n names that were provided. Yes, okay, so, so for people that uh, are, say, are, are said to have been killed. Now, Professor yes. John Moyo mm -hmm. uh, gave some names. Yes. Uh, t t tell us more on this. He yes. says several people died uh, during the process and named certain people. Which are the names? Oh, no, no, he, he meant... He, no, he let brought me some the names. names. Because really, I can't... You see, the trouble is Jonathan uh, is, one, in self-exile. Two, he is a victim of uh, this world operation to the extent that he was a member of G40 right and he has every vested interest in uh, painting the transition darker than the devil right so for him to uh, to talk about claims that are not backed up by facts and figures by names even and suggest that you know you would have a relative who is killed during the operation and you don't raise a human rights issue about it i mean that's that's absolute full hard, uh, full hardness in any case he's jonathan and we all know him so why are we making this central issue no. In any case, there's I, a case I, I, to answer, doesn't he? No, I just asked you a spe very specific question. Yes. You said... Uh, except you it's said not in specific. No, as you said initially that there was no one who named anyone. Okay. And I'm saying there's a person who came with the complaints. Those complaints were made in public and accusations made in public. Were there investigations that took place to, 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 to find to, out the veracity there's nothing of the statement? To, there's nothing to investigate until and unless you paste a name to the tragedy you allege. This is my point. Give me just any, a name, a single name that Jonathan gave and then I will be able to play host to your question. As uh, st things stand, we are talking about a political claim which is a self-serving political goal and I don't think I'm being fair to your listeners to have to deal with a a fugitive right who is out to slight a new dispensation which has bred so much hope for zimbabweans merely because he's jonathan we've got 12 more minutes in the show i want i want to move on to elections we meant mention them in, in, in uh, on uh, in passing what is the position in as far as uh, election observers is concerned oh just uh, today we uh, uh, published a list of uh, election observers uh, who have been admitted uh, to come and observe our own elections. And when I released that list to the media this afternoon, one journalist remarked, there is no news today from this list. And then I said, how so? Then he said, well, because everyone has been invited. So really what we are looking at are persons and institutions as well as countries from SADC, uh, from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America, from uh, Asia, from, from the Pacific, uh, from Europe, from North America, from the whole world to come and observe our elections. Because the whole idea is for us to use elections as a tool of speeding up our re-engagement. And then looking specifically uh, at that election, the opposition has already hit the campaign trail. Yes. It has already uh, traversed length and breadth of the nation, and ZANU-PF is not yet visible. What is the strategy? Don't worry about that. ZANU-PF is visible, but not uh, in opposition terms. Right? Uh, we are fixing the economy. We are dealing with the bread and butter issues, which at the end of the day is what determine how a voter uh, behaves. On the day but more importantly we have our own schedule you don't copy an opponent's uh, strategy you pursue your own uh, what I see is uh, really an excitement an excited juvenilian response to an election that looms large um, but uh, a mature part doesn't behave in that excited and excitable way it takes its sweet time makes his own calculations, decide when 
and how to enter the political fray. I can assure you as we move closer to the election period, you will discover that uh, the mighty machine of ZANU-PF will be unleashed. And of course, I want to preempt a question that will immediately come because immediately people per say to me, why are you speaking like a ZANU-PF official? I am a ZANU-PF uh, supporter uh, who happens to be in government. And I'm raising this matter because I happen to know what is in the office. And you wait and see. You'll be more than satisfied when uh, the machinery begins to roll. So then the question I'll follow up from that, you look at the opposition, yes. is, may, is pulling crowds in what would be defined by many traditionally ZANU-PF uh, areas. Like where? Uh, talk, talking about in uh, bare parts of Mashona land, in, which, in which the parts? Midlands. Th they are pulling crowds. You, I mean, you cannot deny from the images I'm that there are crowds that are being pulled. So I'm are not, you not worried I'm, about I'm that? I'm not worried at all because really this is a benefit to her by default, isn't it? You haven't seen the crowds that ZANU-PF is going to pull eventually, have you? So really nothing is great or small except by comparison. So what are you comparing those crowds to? Right? The key thing in politics is not to behave in a panicky mode or to adopt someone else's strategy. If you are clear about where you stand, what your message is, and how you want to uh, sort of roll out your, your strategy, it doesn't matter what other, ex, uh, what other character is doing or what other synthetic uh, crowds, which, we, which, which, which and, and I happen to know a little more, uh, um, just as I also did during the time of the interface rallies, that there's a way in which you can actually have a roving crowd only uh, appearing at different uh, venues and create an impression for bandwagon effect of being a very popular political proposition. Are you suggesting that there was a roving crowd then? I am not suggesting because your own colleagues in the media are the ones who are making that point. And I, I haven't... Uh, no, I'm on. talking about you said you well, don't worry about, about the, the me. interface. Don't no, worry no, about I'm, me I'm, because I'm just I, asking about what something of, you said. Of, over and above being George Charamba, I am also a consumer of media products. And just now, if you, if you see the story that is trending, it's got to do with the numbers that are being ascribed to those meetings. But more importantly, their origins. Okay, so back to my question. Yes. You mentioned that in, uh, during the interface rallies, yes. the... It's a question. I'm asking you a question. Beautiful. You, and maybe the MDC must answer that. No, no. I'm talking about you. Don't worry about you me. Made, I, you I, made, <laughs> Mr. Shiramba, you make a statement. And I, I'm asking I, you to qualify. I, the the, the not, listener at I, home I, is, is, is not, wondering too. I am not an MDC functionary. We're what not talking I, about MDC only, though. What I've only done is to articulate in a story which is trending. No, 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 I, no, no, that's fine. Right? That's all very well right? and good. But anyway, now that you are pressing me for this one, yes. let me give you my honest answer. Yes. How does it arise, right, that uh, a crowd that is supposed to be blue away best then creates an incident, a traffic incident of persons who are homebound to Mashingwe and Mat South? How does it arise that you have a whole host of, uh, a whole lineup of buses that are all coming from Mashona Land when this, is, this meeting is supposed to take place in, in, in Ulawayo. How does it arise that in Murewa, following that particular, particular rally which they had, you had uh, a whole um, uh, toll, toll gate uh, closer to, uh, to uh, just, just on the outskirts of Chisipiti, which got clogged until 12 midnight. What does that tell you? I, I didn't want to have to be pressed this far, but it does tell you that there's lots of, uh, you know, you know what, if I want to create an impression, it's not difficult politically to do so. So, yes, I'm so, going to ask the question again. You're you talking a very good about, answer. No, you're answer, you're talking about the present. <laughs> the what? You're talking about the present, the accusation you're making in the present of, of MDC. Yes. I'm talking about what you said about the past. Which past? You said you understood that from the inter inter interface rallies, how yes. to create a roving crowd. Don't forget I'm asking, I was an insider. No, I'm asking you a very specific question. Yes. Was there a roving crowd yes, there? Yes, there was. There we go. I finally got the answer. Now, final, final yes, question. Yes, there was. Final question. <laughs> uh, it, took, it was like pulling out teeth. So, final question. T T Tambani Gomo asks here, says, uh, talking about the deals. Yes. 
Okay, that were made. What were the deals about? On what condition did China cancel our debts? And on the say deals of up to 520 million, what is Zimbabwe offering in return? And what is China uh, giving to, for, getting from us? Very, very important question. Uh, the, there was a part cancellation of the debt. The greater part of the debt remains to be serviced. What really happened was China graciously agreed to dealing debt servicing to accessing fresh loans, right? Uh, so really, it was not debt cancellation per se, it was part debt cancellation, but it was also significant in that we were now freed from the burdens of servicing old loans uh, as, a, as a precondition for accessing new loans, right? Uh, but more importantly, we also see, we also saw Sinoshua, which does ensure uh, Chinese capital as it goes overseas, right? Resuming its a cover uh, to those companies that are intent on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on investing in Zimbabwe. We also saw companies that wanted to bid for infrastructural projects like the Kunji Dam, like the, uh, the rail and road projects, uh, like uh, Wange A7 and 8, like the Batoka, are coming on board on the, on the strength of uh, our own presentation when we were there. These are commercial deals, uh, and these are infrastructural uh, elements which are either PPP or BOT, in which case really the conditions are then uh, built into the name of the agreement that we are talking about, right? So really, we also had lots of interest around steel manufacturing and that project for me is the key one mm. because it's going to in um, uh, an equivalent proposition uh, which is in indonesia uh, employs upward of twenty thousand uh, people so really uh we are looking at commercial deals and once we are talking about commercial deals it means it is on the basis of returns and not on the basis of any other obligations now, uh, 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 moving on to uh, another issue the zimbabweans want a presidential debate uh, when can we have it? Uh, Nelson Chamisa versus uh, the president? If you recall, I actually said, if you are a clever political player, you don't fit into the strategy of your opponent. It is up to the president and ZANU-PF to decide whether or not the presidential debate does advance their own overall communication strategy. If it does, you'll have it. If it doesn't, we will not have it. You're an insider. Yes. How likely are we to get one? I don't think we are likely to get it at all. Hmm. Because right, really we don't find any, any purpose at all. You see, one, one key element is in, in, in political communication is go straight to the voter. And there are many ways of doing it outside of uh, the presidential debate. Mr. Charamba, thank you very much for joining us on ZFM Stereo over the last one and a half hours. Uh, and uh, thank you very much to all of you listening. Unfortunately, our phone lines uh, were having a bit of a problem, but we're able to read as many of our twi earlier Twitter uh, uh, messages that we got when we posted uh, the, the, uh, the information on this. And a lot of the WhatsApp messages that came in. Thank you very much for all of you, uh, to all of you for communicating with us. And I say thank you again uh, very much for being part of this discussion. My great pleasure. My name is Larry Quidditt. I am back with you tomorrow between 8.30 and 9 p.m. On, on Health Matters and back, of course, on Wednesday between 7.30 and 8.30. And uh, keep tuned to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. After the news, we've got uh, with Rudo Gunduza, we have got uh, So Profound with uh, The Love Lounge. Take care of yourself and the people that you love. And as I say, from where I come from, I'll see you, Mr. Sevenza. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Thank you.